Today we're going to answer some of our viewers' questions that are regularly being asked on our YouTube channel. A question I often get is, how long should my sinker line be? So I'm going to discuss that with you guys today and tell you how I apply it in my fishing. Alright, so obviously when we fish we've got different traces for different species and different conditions. And that makes it a bit complicated when it comes to sinker lens. So what I'll do, I'll keep it as simple as possible. Um, and try not confuse you with the small technicalities of sinker lens and hopefully it'll make sense to you after this video. Alright, so I'm going to start off with our little scratching trace, which we call a scratching trace. It's a trace that we use for targeting smaller fish in the reefs, like bronze bream or uh, most of the reef species when we fish in rougher water on the reef. Now, for me, the first fundamental about a, a sinker line is that, so move that out of the way, is that I prefer my sinker line to be longer than my, my hook trace. So as you can see there, my sinker line is a bit longer than my hook trace. So that distance there is, is not that critical on this specific trace. It can be a little bit longer or shorter, but as long as your sinker is, trace is longer than your hook trace. Right, and, and the reason for that is, there's two reasons I do it. The first reason is casting. If you want to throw a long cast and your sinker line is shorter than your hook trace, your, the flight of your bait in the sinker through the air is not nice and even. Often it sort of starts flying unevenly and you lose a lot of distance. So just by making your sinker line a bit longer than your hook line, it evens out the balance in your trace. The sinker will fly first, obviously, because it's the longest, and your hook line will be behind, and you'll get a nice straight arc when you cast and you'll get more distance. So for me, the main reason for it being a bit longer is always getting distance in my cast. But now if you want to start getting a bit technical about it, and that will be the second reason I make it a bit longer is, you can imagine if you're fishing now in a reef and your sinker is sitting in the reef there, your sinker line and the hook length can determine where you place your bait. So bait placement will be the second reason why I determine how long my sinker line will be. So this is a little scratching trace, a double hook trace, and I always fish this trace with two things in mind. My bottom bait is going to lie in the reef between the rocks, and my top hook is going to be in a different zone. It's going to be up there. I'm standing fishing with a 15 foot rod, so I've got an arc going down with a braid, it's direct. So it should be somewhere there, depending on how I stand, but generally. And as you can see, that hook is in a different zone. It's off the reef. It's it's in a different zone completely and this hook will target your fish feeding quite high up in the reef and the bottom hook that should the sinker will be targeting the fish that live in the reef like our rock cod species our grouper species and the top hook your know, fish swimming higher will be fish like bronze bream halyun cob etc depending where you fish and what we're targeting so that is as simple as it is on our scratching traces um, so the two reasons, one is for getting distance on the cast, and the next is for placing your bait in the zone that you want the bait. Right, so I hope that makes sense to you guys. Then a nice little interesting trace that I started fishing with a short while ago, fishing the reef. And this is actually from a friend of mine who does a lot of reef fishing, and he showed me this trace, and it makes so much sense. Especially when you're fishing in foul reef where you get stuck a lot, and you don't want to fish with this double loop trace. But you want to keep that hook of yours in the upper zone, sort of in the sort of the working water zone and not on the reef. So I'm going to show you that little trace and it looks a bit silly but it actually works very very well. So, and this trace is specifically for, for, for scratching in the bricks um, and as you can see here I've got a very long sinker line and then a single hook and I'll adapt this sinker line to the depth that I actually want my bait to be. So. If you can imagine, you're standing with your rod attached there, and you've got that height. So you've got the short little hook snoot and trace here, with extremely long sinker line. And I say, I'll determine the length of this line on how deep I want my bait to sit. So obviously, if I want my bait to sit a bit higher, I'll make this longer. And if I want the bait to sit lower in the water, I'll shorten the sinker line. And as you can see, the hook is closer to the reef itself. So. It's a very effective way of fishing. The only disadvantage about this is that 
if you hook a fish here, you've got this long sinker line dragging behind you when you're fighting a fish. So it could be a bit of a difficult one, but this is a very specific way of fishing, and that's when you want to change or determine the height of your bait in the zone. All right, so that sort of just explains to you the thinking about behind the sinker line length. The shorter you'll make it, the closer it'll be to the bottom. The longer you'll make it, the higher it'll lift off, and you'll get your hook in a different zone. All right, so that is our edible fishing. Often when I fish for species like cob, and I, I put a big float in my bait, and I want it in a, in a zone a meter above the ground, uh, uh, above the sand, I'll have a, my sinker line at about 600 millimeters, I'll make my trace line about 550. So it's a little bit shorter, I've still got a bit longer sinker for the casting distance, but then you've got a very long sinker line, and then you've got a float on your bait that it can lift it even higher, so you can get right off the bottom. So you can determine which zone you want to fish in, and by as soon as you determine where you want your bait, you can adjust your sinker line length according to where you want your bait. Right guys, so that's my edible fishing, and that's how I think about it when I make an edible trace. Um, it's not always easy, sometimes it's a bit of a trial and error, you make a few throws and until you determine the depth you want your bait, and you stick to what works you in the day. When it comes to our non-eds, um, which will be rays and sharks and stuff for us here where we fish, we obviously fish with a quite a standard trace, which is a limited slide trace we use these days. Um, either if you're going for sharks, obviously you'll fish with a full metal jacket steel, and if you go for your rays um, in the cleaner water, you'll go with your fluorocarbon trace. And our trace is very, very sort of standard. It is that limited slide. We've got your, your sinker line sliding up to your stopper and from the stopper down to your hook. Now, the sinker line length on this trace gets determined by how you're gonna cast your bait firstly. So once again, I want my sinker line longer than my hook trace for the distance as I explained. But when it comes to our bigger baits, we often put a dingle onto our hook. And the dingle is obviously the tool we use to attach our bait to. So we're gonna build a bait around a dingle. So this is where your sinker line length will be determined by the size of the dingle you're gonna use. Or if you're gonna clip it, sometimes guys with clip without a dingle just clip the sinker onto the hook like that. But with us using a dingle, that's gonna determine your sinker line length, which is quite logic. So, but the last thing you wanna do is make your sinker line exactly as long as your dingle. Because the problem you sit with is that when you cast and it's under tension like that and your sinker lands, it doesn't unclip nicely because it, this is too short, it's, it's under tension. So you wanna give your sinker line a bit of length so there's play in it. So as your sinker lands, it unclips. So I've given it about 10 centimeters play, and that's where I'm gonna attach my sinker to. So I'll just put it on quickly, and I'll show you guys. So as you can see there, my stopper is there to my swivel and I've got extra play on that. And the only reason I like that extra play is, clip that on for you, there's a 10 centimeter play I was talking about, is as a sinker lands or your bait lands in the ocean or on the bottom, it just unclips and your bait is free from your sinker. I found, as I said, when it's too close, and you haven't got much play, often it doesn't unclip when it lands because everything is too tight. So I said, just give it that bit of play, that 10 centimeters play. Then as it lands, it'll unclip and your bait is free. So once again, if you want to place your shark or ray bait in a, in a zone, um, 
often for certain species we'd like to float this have a big float then again you can determine your trace length your sinker length and where you want in the zone but generally for rays obviously your your bait wants to lie on the bottom because they feed off the bottom so that's why it really doesn't matter on this specific trace the only time i would really think about it hard is if i was starting a species like a duckbill which swims up in a higher zone i might then make a very long sinker trace with a long hook trace big float to float the bait high up and target that species all right guys so it's as simple as that um i hope it makes sense to the guys out there that ask the question play around with it and find what works for you and hopefully it'll improve your fishing.